Welcome along to another video. I am that cycling chump. And in this one, I've just received a package. I'm hoping the contents of this box is going to help me out in my future cycling adventures. If you want to find out what's inside, you're just going to have to stick around to the end of the video for the reveal. In the meantime, I'm going to get changed and I'm going to go out and do a bit of training. So see you later on in the video. It's Sunday morning, I woke up early this morning and decided to come out. We're on the last weekend of February and I'm currently riding between Presswick and Old Kerricks Road towards the village of Simonton. Decided to challenge myself with Kareth Hill today and I'm also trying to get a lot of kilometres in. I've got about 85 kilometres to do within the next four days and that will let me complete my February Strava challenge. It's just great that that's the lighter morning starting to come in again. So it means we can go out a lot earlier. I think I startled day sheep there. Anyway, I've no plan as such today on a route. It's just really a free ride. I'm going to head towards Kilmarnock, come back the way across Dervin, back to Troon. Probably stop for a coffee and then back home. So it really is just a training day. But if you're enjoying these wee adventures I'm having, stick around and remember to stay to the end of the video and you'll see the big reveal on the mystery box. Well that's me got just over 10 kilometres. I like that little climb just at the old Kerricks farm. The gradient's not too much, it's not too little, but it definitely warms you up. I'm just about to head into the village of Simonton, then we'll turn in and start heading towards Kareth Hill. I've not done it for a wee while, so I want to see if I feel any stronger doing it this time. And using Climb Pro on my Garmin, I want to see if my time's any faster. After my last adventure, at Whiteley Wind Farm, I had to absolutely detail the bike. And I'll admit, she is running absolutely amazing today. Time to get through Simonton. Well, Kareth Hill definitely wakes you up in the morning. It's a 5% gradient, just underneath a kilometre, and I've done that in 2 minutes and 37 seconds, which is considerably faster than my last time, which I think was about 4 minutes something, but it's definitely a workout. Anyway, now to get down the other side of Kareth Hill, towards Lones, and then we'll cut back into Troon.
Now I've came across a dilemma. One of my adventures I was planning in the next couple of weeks was going to go to the Isle of Arran. But seemingly, the ferry that usually goes across is in bad state of repair. And the new ferry that they were building still isn't ready yet. I have heard rumours that they're going to be sailing from Trun, but I need to find out a little bit more. It would actually be a bit handier for me going from Trun. But at the same time, going from its usual port of a crossing doesn't really bother me because I can just throw the bike into the back of the car. But my other island adventures will still be on the cards at the moment. I'm probably going to do the Greater Isle of Cymru, or Millport as everybody knows it. It's the shortest and most accessible island. I'll probably be doing that pretty soon. That's usually my first kind of true outing when the Scottish cycling season starts. The weather has been absolutely immaculate this morning. It is a little bit chilly, but it's nothing to worry about. There's like no wind. The sun's starting to come out back and forward. It's quiet. The roads have been pretty quiet coming out at this time. I haven't seen as many cyclists this morning, so where are you all this morning? I'd just like to say I'd like to commend some of the drivers this morning because they have actually been quite polite. They've been giving me a lot of space in the road, unlike the other day when I had two altercations. That's me now heading into the town of Trun. I'll go down to South Beach and see if the kiosk is open to get a nice mocha. I'll see you in two seconds. Well, I thought it was out a little bit early and the South Beach kiosk wasn't going to be open, but it was, and I managed to get my wee mocha. And my wee snack today is a Trek Protein Flapjack lemon flavour. And it's absolutely rock solid because it's been sitting out in the cold. That's a pit stop coffee had, <coughs> and now it's homeward bound. Now, when I was in Trin there, I could hear the murmur of an engine and you could probably hear it in the background just now there's another big military plane just come in to Presswick Airport I'm not sure what Air Force it is yet but we'll find out in a wee second because it's pretty close it looks like the Canadian Air Force is in today I'm unsure if it's a military training exercise they're doing or they're just in refueling to go elsewhere in the world. That was a little bit of excitement for the morning. Well, that's me coming up to 35 kilometres and nearly back home. One of the biggest things today that I've not had is a puncture in the back wheel. I changed the tyre the other day and when I took the carcass off, I still couldn't find anything in it, so I thought by changing the tyre it might help a lot. Which brings me on to this mystery box and what's inside it. So, Kyle, tell us what's inside the box. Well, thank you very much, Kyle. Inside this box, there's a few items. There's actually a smaller box inside our package, and I'll open that one first. Contents of this package are as follows. I was getting quite a lot of punctures out in the road, so when I was pumping my tyre back up, I was actually struggling quite a lot to know what PSI I was having, and sometimes I was either over-inflating or under-inflating my tyre. So I decided to pick myself up a little digital pressure gauge. Now, 
I haven't tried this out yet, so I don't know how it's going to be. But I just thought, give me a great idea of what PSI I'm actually running at. I think what's happening is I might be getting pinched flats because I'm overinflating my tyres. This brings me on to the second item. Now, I've been looking at a lot of reviews online and a lot of you guys in the community have been saying to me, you need to get one of these for taking out the bike because they're that small. They are not cheap whatsoever. I decided to pick myself up one of these mini bicycle tyre inflators that are battery powered uh, by Psych Plus. So they're pretty light and I can chuck them into a pocket. I'll probably do a full on review later just to let you know exactly what I think about these. Um, I'm going to charge that up and actually see how I got on with this. It claims it can pump your tyre up to 80 PSI in 80 seconds, which is quite quick. I'm still going to take my pump out with me because you know, I'd rather use my pump and just use this to top up. But uh, we'll see how we got on with this. The next big thing inside this mystery box, I've been looking round about for a little while and I actually picked up a book by Marcus Sticks and it's called Bikepacking Scotland. Now, I've been looking into routes and commute and some of them are starting to be a little bit longer than my usual training routes. So I was looking for something that I could take with me to take a little more cargo. I didn't really want to get a full-on pannier set so that it was attached to the bike. So I was looking at different systems and I actually looked at the tail fin system. But I thought it was slightly out of my budget um, for what I was looking for. But then one or two people in the community had kind of pointed me towards a different system that I didn't even know existed. I picked up a pannier set from Aero and it's the rear spider rack it's called. I liked to look at this when I was looking online because it's a detachable pannier set for quickness. So it means that I can put this on if I need it on and I can take it off very quickly. I'll do a full on video of me installing this and then what my thoughts and my, my views are. Kind of like a review but it looks pretty sturdy and the reviews that I have read so far have been pretty good. I was really wanting a certain type of dry bag that, that you can get with it, which is an 8 litre one and it's bright orange, but I can't seem to get my hands on one just now. So I opted to get the 12 litre version, which is slightly bigger. So that'll give me like an idea of um, how the system works and if it is good or not. So I'll let you guys know. That was a big reveal this week in the box. So as I said, I'll, I'll let you know further down the line how I got on with that. Well, that's us got to the end of another video. I'd just like to thank you all for sticking around. If you liked it, give us a huge thumbs up. And if you really liked it, consider hitting that subscribe and notification button because your subscribing keeps me and the channel riding. I would just like to thank all my subscribers as well because the numbers are getting pushed up every single week. I've gained another 10 subscribers since the last video. And I hope you've enjoyed the last video at, at White Lee Wind Farm because it was an absolutely great day out despite the weather. I'm hoping to travel back up there in the future when it's maybe a little bit drier and the weather's a bit better. I hope to see you all in the next one. But in the meantime, you can check out my last video here, which was at White Lee Wind Farm, or you can check out previously on That Cycling Chimp, which are videos from the archive below. Until the next time, guys, bye for now.